Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kotomi. Today I'm going to present uh, our full data science book, chapter 12. And chapter 12 is about communication. Uh, previously in chapter 11, we learned how to use PROT as tools for exploration like when we make exploratory plots. Now that we know our data, like we need to communicate our understanding to others. So in this chapter, we will focus on the tools we need to create good graphics. And we assume that we know what we want and just need to know how to do it. For those reasons, like uh, they are recommending us to like pairing this chapter with good general visualization books. And in the book, they are mentioning about the truthful art. I will share the link. And another book I think is good, like helpful for data visualization is that modern data visualization with R. Um, I worked this book for the another book craft, and I think this is really useful for as a reference. And in this chapter, we will focus on uh, five main packages, a ggplot to ggrepel patchwork scales and dprior. And like, if you don't have them in your R, like we can use install packages to install them and um, be ready to use. First section is about labels. The easiest place to start like when turning an expository graphic into an expository graphic is with good labels. And we can use labels with the labs function. In this code, the purpose of like plotting a title is to summarize the main findings. So here in the book, we set title as fuel efficiency generally decreases with engine size. Like try to avoid putting title like um just like a described what the prot is, for example, like a scatter prot of engine depressment versus fuel economy. And other uh arguments in love's function we have is uh we replace X as engine depressment. Y as highway fuel economy. For the color, we have car type and title and subtitle and also caption. And if we need to add like more text, like we have some like useful labels we can use subtitle to add additional detail in a smaller font, the below title. And we can use caption to add text at the bottom right of the plot. This is often used to describe the source of the data. And we can also use labs to replace the axis and legend titles. 
it's usually a good idea to replace short variable names with more detailed descriptions and include, include the units. Sometimes it's possible to use mathematical equations instead of text strings. For that, we can just switch a double quote quotations out for quote a per, per, a quote and read about the available options in a question mark plot math. Next, we have annotations. In addition to labeling major components, it's often useful to label individual observations or groups of observations. The first tool we have at our disposal is genome text. And it is similar to geome point, but it has an additional aesthetic label. And this label makes it possible to add textual labels to our plot. First, let's say we have a table that provides labels. And in the in the following plot, we put all out cars with the highest engine size in each drive type and save their information as a new data frame. And we called that as level info. Then now we use this new data frame level info to directly label the three groups to replace the legend legend with labels. Using the font face and size arguments, we can customize the look of the text labels. They are larger than the rest of the text on the plot and bolded. And if we use this uh, theme legend position equals to none, we can turn all the legends off. And horizontal justification and vertical justification is to control the alignment of the label. We can notice that this annotated, annotated plot like we just made is really hard to read because the labels labels are overlapping with each other with each other and even with the points. In order to fix this, we can use geom label repel function. And this useful a package will automatically adjust labels so that um, they don't overlap. Yeah, those are really nice looking. Like I like not needing the, the legend and instead just having the name in the graph, you're able to have like a bigger a bigger database and like still get the information you need. Yeah. Like in addition to the previous function, we can also use um the same idea to highlight certain points on the plot with geom text to repel. Here, like another handy technique is used. 
is that we added a second layer of large hollow points to further highlight the labeled points. And in addition to those two functions, we also have like other geoms in ggplot2 to help annotate our plot. For example, like geom uh, horizontal line and vertical line is to use to add reference lines. We often make them thick and white and draw them underneath the primary data layer so that um, this makes them easy to see without drawing attention away from the data. Another one is geom rectangle. This is um, used to draw a rectangle around points of interest. And the boundaries of the rectangle are defined by aesthetic x min minimum, x maximum, y minimum, y maximum. We can also use a uh, geom mark hull, which allows us to annotate subsets of points with hulls. And also we have geom segment. We can use this with the arrow, arrow argument to draw attention to a point with an arrow. Another handy function for adding annotations to plot is annotate function. Geoms are generally useful for highlighting a subset of the data and annotate function is useful for adding one or a few annotation elements to a plot. To demonstrate using annotate function, let's create some text to add to our plot. The text is a bit long, so we can use string wrap function from, from string R to automatically add line breaks to it given the number of characters you want per line. Now we can add two layers of annotation. First with a level geom and the other with a segment geom. The X and Y aesthetics in both, in both define where the annotation should start. And the X and Y and aesthetics in the segment annotation define the end location of the segment. So by switching the numbers here, like we can change the location of the um this level and um uh, like segment and even we can change the color next we have scales so by adjusting scales we can make our plot better for communication. And scales can control how the aesthetic mappings manifest visually. As a default, if we, if we code this simple like ggplot code, um, automatically ggplot2 will like add scales for us.
but behind the scene what it is actually doing is like this additional code without typing So here, naming um, scheme for scales. We start from the scale underscore and then followed by the name of the aesthetic. And then uh, underscore and then the name of the scale followed by the name of the scale. The default scales are named according to the type of variable they align with. For example, continuous, discrete, like date, time, or date. So for example, scale underscore x underscore continuous. This will put the numeric values from um, displacement on the continuous number line on the x-axis. The default scales have been carefully chosen to do a good job for a wide range of input, but you might want to override the defaults for two reasons. First reason, you might want to tweak some of the parameters of the default scale. This allows you to do things like change the breaks on the axis or the key labels on the legend. The second reason is you might want to replace the scale altogether and use a completely different algorithm. Often you can do it better than the default because you know more about the data. So collectively, axes and legends are called guides. Axes are used for X and Y. And legends are used for everything else. There are two primary arguments that affect the appearance of the ticks on the axis and the keys on the legend, breaks and labels. Breaks controls the position of the ticks or the values associated with the keys and labels controls the text label associated with each tick or key. The most common use of breaks is to override the default choice. We can also use labels in the same way, but you can also set it to now to suppress the labels altogether. This can be useful for maps or for publishing plots where you cannot share the absolute numbers. You can also use breaks and labels to control the appearance of regions for discrete scales for categorical variables. Labels can be a named list of the existing labels, names and the desired labels for them. And the labels argument coupled with labeling functions from the scales package is also useful for formatting numbers as currency or percentage. The plot, this plot shows um, default rivaling with label dollar function which adds a dollar sign as well as thousand separator comma. 
but this plot below adds further customization by dividing dollar values by 1000 and adding a suff suffix k for thousands as well as adding custom breaks and for this um another handy label function is to use label percent function This will automatically put the uh, percentage of the level. Another use of breaks is when you have when you have um, relatively few data points and you want to highlight exactly where the observations occur. For example, take this plot that shows when each US president started and ended their term. For the breaks argument, we put out the start variable as a vector with president presidential start. because we cannot do an aesthetic mapping for this argument. And instead of just like tweaking the details a little, we can instead replace the scale altogether. There are two types of scales you are most likely to want to switch out are continuous position scales and color scales. The same principles apply to all the other aesthetics. So once you've mastered position and color, you'll be able to quickly pick up other scale replacements. It's very useful to plot transformations of your variable. For example, we want to see the precise relationship between carat and price. This is the plot of without transformation, but if we apply log transformation, It's easier to see the precise relationship. But the disadvantage of this transformation is that the axes are now labeled with the transformed values, like log. So it is making, like, it is hard to interpret the plot. So for instance, we can use uh, scale. This is visually identical, except the axes are labeled on the original data scale. Another scale that is frequently customized is color. The default categorical scale picks colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel. Useful alternatives are the color bluer, uh, which have been hand tuned to work better for people with common types of color brightness. And here is the complete list of all patterns of the color and the sequential one and this diverging 
palettes are particularly useful if we want to if we if our categorical values are ordered or like when it has a like a middle value. Like the next two plots look very similar, but if you can compare this plot as this plot, like this plot, um, we can clearly see the difference of the shades in the color of red and green. And compared to this, like a lighter color of the plot, um, this plot can be distinct distinguished even by people with red green color blindness. And let's say if you have only just a few colors, you can add a redundant shape mapping. This will also help ensure your plot is interpretable in black and white. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Um, when you have a predefined mapping between values and colors, we can use scale color manual function. For example, if we want to map presidential party to color, we want to use the standard mapping of red for rep Republicans and blue for Democrats. One approach for assigning these colors is using hex color codes. And for continuous color, we can use the built-in scale color gradient or scale fill gradient functions. If we have a diver diverging scale, we can use scale color gradient to function. This allows us to give positive and negative values different colors, or sometimes also useful to use when we want to distinguish points above or below the mean. Another option is to use the Viridis color scales. Um, these scales are designed by two designers. Um, they carefully tailored continuous color schemes that are perceptible to people with various various forms of color blindness as well as perceptual perceptually uniform in both color and black and white these scales are available as continuous discrete and bin patterns in gzpro2 So basically, this will look like um, this um, plot. And these like all color schemes come in two varieties.
The next is zooming. There are three ways to control the plot limits. First, adjusting what data are plotted. Second, setting the limits in each scale. The third is setting X limit and Y limit in Cartesian coordinate function. So we, uh, we will demonstrate these options in a series of plot. The plot on the left shows the relationship between engine size and fuel efficiency. And this is colored by type of drive train. The plot on the right shows the same variables, but subsets the data are plotted. And by subsetting the data, it's affecting the X and Y scales as well as the smooth curve. So now we have another two plot. The one on the left sets the limits on individual scales. And the one on the right sets them in Cartesian coordinate function. We can see that reducing the limits is equivalent to subsetting the data. So like zooming in on a region or region of the plot, it's generally best to use Cartesian coordinate function. At the same time, setting the limits on individual scales is generally more useful if we want to expand the limits. For example, if we ex extract two classes of cars and plot them separately, it's difficult to compare the plots because all three scales have different ranges. So in this plot, um, the plot on the left is for the car uh, make SEV and on the right is for compact. So we have different uh, ranges in Y axis and X axis. One way to overcome this problem is to share scales across multiple plots, training the scales with the limits of the full data. In this particular case, we can also simply use like facet facet but this technique is useful more generally like if we want to spread plots over multiple pages of a report and next is themes now we can customize the non-data elements of our plot with a theme. In order to control the overall position of the legend, we need to use a theme setting. The theme setting legend position function 
controls where the legend is drawn. And if you have a plot which is tall and narrow, it is good to press the legend at the left or right. And if your plot is short and wide, press the legend at the top or bottom. And it is also possible to control individual components of each theme. For example, size and color of the font used for Y axis. We have already seen that legend position controls where the legend is drawn. There are many other aspects of the legend that can be customized with theme function. For example, in the plot, for example, um, customization of the legend box and plot title elements of the theme are done with element underscore functions. And these functions specify the styling of non-data components. For example, the title text is bolded in the face argument of element underscore text function, and the legend border color is defined in the color argument of element rectangle function. The theme elements that control the position of the title, uh, title and the caption are plot title position and Plot caption position, respectively. In the following plot, these are set to plot to indicate these elements are aligned to the entire plot area instead of the plot panel. And a few other helpful theme components are used to change the placement for format of the title and caption text. And ggplot2 includes the eight themes uh, with theme gray function as the default. And many more are included in add-on packages like ggthemes. You can also create like your own themes if you are trying to match a particular corporate or journal style. And so far we have talked about how to create and modify a single plot. But what if we want to have multiple plots we want to lay out in a certain way. The patchwork package allows us to combine separate plots into the same graphic. In order to place two plots next to each other, we can simply add a plus operator uh, per, uh, simply add them to each other. But here we have to remember that first we need to create the plots and save them as objects. Then we place them next to each other with a plus operator.
in the following code chunk below, we didn't use a new function from patchwork package, but instead we used uh, instead the package added a new functionality to the pl plus operator. So basically we have two ggplot and we assign those into P1 and P2. And in the end, like we add them using plus operator in order to um show them next to each other. Now we can also create a little more complex plot layout. In the following uh, vertical line places this line places that um, uh, P1 and P3 next to each other and the slash moves P2 to the next line. Additionally, patchwork allows us to collect legends from multiple plots into one common legend, customize the placement of the legend as well as dimensions of the plot, and other common title, subtitle, caption, etc. to our plot. Here we are creating five plots. And we have turned off the legends on the box plots and the scatter plot and collected the legends for the density plots at the top of the plot with um, this line. And we can notice that in this um, code, this AND operator or the use of the AND operator here instead of the usual like press operator. And the legend is placed on top inside the guide area function. And finally, we have also customized the heights of the various components of our patchwork. The guide, guide has a height of one. The box plot three, then the plot two, and the faced plus faceted scatter plot four. Patchwork divides up the area you have allotted for your plot using this scale and places the components accordingly. That's really cool. Yeah, I feel like I previously used the calplot package, and um, but I like, I like how this package, how patchwork works. Very cool. Mm -hmm. In this chapter, we learned about adding plot levels such as title, subtitle, caption, as well as modifying default access levels. 
using annotation to add information, informational text to our plot or to highlight specific data points and customizing the axis scales and changing the theme of our plot. Also, we have learned about combining multiple plots in a single graph using both simple and complex plot layouts. Uh, if, we, if we want to get a comprehensive understanding of ZZPROT2, ZZ um, there are some recommend, recommended books. Um, I will share the link. And also, um, we can also use this simulation to like this link to simulate um, color brightness to test um, if you are interested. But Oh, yeah, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for telling me.